Energy might be the reason why Russia invaded Ukraine while the western countries watched in silence. In 2019, 39% of the federal budget revenue of Russia came from selling oil and gas. About two thirds of Russia's federal budget comes from these energy exports. So if it were... Out of all the things that Russia exports globally, 60% of the exports are oil and gas. Russia is heavily reliant on oil and gas to fuel economic growth. And that has led Russia to become a warmonger. To understand how that happened, let us take a closer look at the short geographical history of Russia. Hi guys, I'm Pratik and you are watching Eclectic. On this channel, I bring together ideas from diverse fields of knowledge to give you guys a different perspective to look at the world. If you are someone who wants to understand your past, improve your present and shape your future, you are at the right place. Welcome and get aboard. At the end of the World War II in 1945, the Russians occupied the territories conquered by Germany in the Central and Eastern Europe. These new conquered regions became part of the USSR. Their empire almost resembled the old Russian Empire. Soviet Union was a formidable economic power of the 20th century, rivaled only by the United States. Four years later, in 1949, 12 countries from Europe and North America came together and formed NATO with one primary motive to deal with the ever expanding Russian influence in the region. April 4, 1949, the North Atlantic Treaty was signed between France, Belgium, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, Norway, Denmark, Italy, Portugal, Iceland, Canada, and the United States. They are sworn to stand together against aggression. An attack against one would be an attack against all. For a few years, things looked pretty good for the Soviet Union, but in the late 20th century, overstretching, spending more money than was available, steady economic decline and the defeat in the mountains of Afghanistan led to the fall of the Soviet Union. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed, largely a result of economic stagnation brought on by the nuclear arms race. In the 1989, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the Soviet Union was dissolved in 15 new countries including the country Russia we know today. Russian Empire shrank back to the shape of more or less the pre-communist era, with its European borders ending at Estonia, Latvia, Belarus, Ukraine and Azerbaijan. And the economy of this new Russian Empire was in shambles. It had to sell 45,000 public businesses from the sectors like energy, mining and communication. Throughout the late 20th century, the influence of Russia kept declining, while the power and influence of NATO kept expanding. Uh, I know that Russia has tried to spread the myth that they were promised many years ago uh, that NATO and the EU wouldn't um, enlarge uh, eastwards. Such a promise has never, ever uh, been uh, given. NATO steadily crept closer to Russian borders, trying to surround Russia from all sides. It spread its legs by incorporating former USSR countries in its organization one by one, while Russia watched it all helplessly, until one man decided to fight back. Vladimir Putin, a former KGB spy, rose to power in Russia at the end of the 20th century. He declared that the fall of the Soviet Union was a major geopolitical disaster of the century. He was probably right. Those of you who want to understand how geography plays an important role in the economic success of any country should watch my video on how geography determines the success of your country. You see, when the Russian Empire lost regions of Poland and Baltic states such as Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, it lost access to major trading ports that are on the shores of the Baltic Sea ports that are very important for exporting oil and other things across the globe. To make things worse, these countries joined NATO and Russian influence took another major blow. Farther down, when Ukraine got separated from Russia, Russia lost access to another important port, the port of Sevastopol. In Putin's eyes, after the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia lost the 2 million square miles of geopolitically important land, and he intends to fix this geographical disaster at any cost to restore the Russia to its former glory. Whatever that means. Approximately 400 years ago, in the 60th century, there was another ruler who faced the same geographical problems as Putin. His name was Ivan the Terrible. He is the proof that one man can change the course of history. During his reign, the early Russian Empire had no geographical protection at all. It was surrounded by flatlands. It had no mountains or deserts to protect itself from the outside invasion. To deal with that, Ivan the Terrible came up with a brilliant strategy, using attack as a defense. 
He said, oh, well, if our empire is difficult to defend, then I will consolidate my power at home and will keep attacking outwards to conquer new regions. Ivan the Terrible is the reason why Russia is so big today. If you want to know his story, I have a video on that as well. Vladimir Putin exactly follows Ivan's strategy of using attack as defense. He keeps things under control at home while using aggressive foreign policies to exercise influence over Russia's neighbors. Now, unlike Ivan the Terrible using military all the time to conquer new new lands is not feasible in the 21st century. So Putin uses traditional military methods in combination with the new age 21st century weapons. Yes, the 21st century weapons. And I'm not talking about the nuclear weapons. I'm talking about weapons such as economics, civil unrest, and of course, energy. Since the Industrial Revolution, human society's dependence on energy has increased very rapidly. And in the 21st century, we are now more dependent on energy than ever before. Not all countries can produce energy for themselves, and the few countries who can enjoy a very unique advantage over the others. In 2015, author Tim Marshall wrote in his global bestseller book on geopolitics, energy would become the most used political weapon of the 21st century. Most of the European countries are dependent on Russian energy to keep their homes warm during the winter. The European Union relies on Russia for about 40% of its gas. The closer a country is to Russia, the greater its dependency on Russian energy. Countries like Latvia, Slovakia and Finland are 100% reliant on Russian energy. Countries like Greece, Austria and Hungary 60% and even a country like Germany gets 50% of its gas supply from Russia. Remember in 2008, Bush tried to fast track Ukraine and Georgia into NATO and Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, vetoed it. Putin's behavior in the Ukrainian crisis has been almost entirely reactive, reacting to unwise Western policy. The gas pipelines run from east to west linking Russia to Europe. Via Baltic Sea, Nord Stream 1 transports energy directly to Germany. Below is the Yamal pipeline that travels through Belarus and meets Poland. Farther down is the Blue Stream taking Russian gas to Turkey. And in the middle here is the Ukraine which also hosts several important pipelines that transport energy to the west and the Balkans. Now you know why Ukraine is so important to Putin. Why would Russia want to lose its influence over Ukraine if the Russian gas pipelines that run through Ukraine bring so many economic benefits? And Russia needs those economic benefits desperately because Russia's economy is heavily reliant on oil and gas. Secondly, if Ukraine joins NATO, it would mean that NATO forces and most importantly the American forces would be stationed at the very borders of Russia, just like they are stationed right now in eastern Poland and the Baltic Sea. Russia cannot have them stationed in Ukraine at any cost. Every, every year, Russia sells $100 billion worth of oil and gas to Europe and pays measly $2 billion to Ukraine every year in transit fees. Russia is getting richer while common Ukrainians are struggling in poverty. In 2014, Ukraine's poverty rate was 28.6%. In 2019, it rose up to 37.8%. That is why Ukraine wants to join European Union for exploring new economic opportunities and ending its economic dependence on Russia. But whenever Ukraine tries to get closer to Europe, Putin strikes. This is not the first time Putin invaded Ukraine. It is actually the second time in the last 10 years. President Putin has a big master plan to re-establish a zone of Russian influence uh, in the near neighborhood, actually covering the old uh, Soviet uh, space. In 2014, when then Ukraine's President Viktor Yanukovych came close to signing a massive trade deal with the European Union, one which could lead to EU and NATO membership, Putin invaded Ukraine and took control of the Crimean Peninsula, so that Russia can have access to the warm water port of Sevastopol even if Ukraine joins NATO. A warm water port is a port that stays operational in all seasons, where water does not freeze during winter time. Geopolitical experts like Tim Marshall state that Russia had no choice but to invade Ukraine and take control of Crimea. Because the port of Sevastopol was the only true major warm water port Russia had access to for exporting oil and goods. That proves the lesson number one in diplomacy for the beginners. When faced with what is considered an existential threat, a great power like Russia will use force. After President Yanukovych failed to counter Russia, the common people of Ukraine elected Vladimir Zelensky 
primarily because of his anti-Russian stance. When he tried to join NATO, Putin struck again this year in 2021. Back in 2014, Western countries responded to the Russian annexation of Crimea by imposing heavy economic taxes. Freezing the assets of several Russian defense companies and we are blocking new financing of some of Russia's most important banks and energy companies. But the sanctions don't prevent Russia from selling oil or gas to Western partners, which would likely hit the Russian economy hardest. They are doing the same thing right now. But let me tell you a secret. These economic sanctions won't have any serious impact on Russia, primarily because these sanctions don't include energy. These sanctions are not imposed on buying energy. The gas flow from Russia to Europe actually increased after the invasion started. The West just cannot stop buying energy from Russia. Putin's strategy might have worked in the past, but experts believe that they might not work this time. Putin thought as soon as he invades Ukraine, the current Ukrainian president would flood his country and the common Ukrainians would surrender to Russia. But that's not what happened this time. Current Ukrainian president is a brave leader. He and his people stood firmly and fought back. I pray that Putin loses this time. If he doesn't, he might go on to bring even more calamity and chaos in the near future. Before World War II, no one opposed Hitler when he invaded Austria and Poland. No one stood up to him and said enough is enough. And we all know how that turned out. It led to the deaths of 80 million people. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Russia must stop looking backwards to their imperial past. Past imperialism cannot justify present-day expansionism. Putin must realize that the world has moved on, and so should he.